Thank you, Lance. It's always good to have your boss stand up and say that he wants you to <laughs> increase the scope of your services by 50 times. Um, so that's going to get me started. Um, I usually start a talk like this by talking about the problems of, of public education. And uh, because we're at the point in the program where you might want some movement, I thought I would do this a little differently today. And also because some of you have probably heard this before. So I thought I'd start by asking you to stand up right now if, if you think that California ranks in the top 10 states in the country for fourth grade reading scores. Stand up. <laughs> OK, how about top 20 states? Does anyone want to take a top 30 states in, in the country? OK, top 40. Does anyone think we're at least not in the bottom 10 states? I want to stand up right now and let everybody see you. <laughs> Ellen, you're not allowed to stand up. Um, OK, the, the truth is California ranks 47th out of 50 states for fourth grade reading scores. And for low-income students, if you look at students eligible for federally subsidized lunches, we are dead last. OK, this time we're going to do some exercise. We'll do a little better next time. OK, so stand up if you think that in 2009, Three out of four fourth graders in California could read at the grade level. Anyone want to stand up for that one? Two out of four. Who thinks that half, at least half of our fourth graders are reading at grade level? Anybody want to stand up for that one? No takers? Oh, come on, we're going to need some exercise eventually. How about one out of four fourth graders? Come on, there we go. Exercise at last. No, you're correct. You are right. You are, well, you're close. 24% of kids in California's fourth grades can read at their grade level. And among low-income kids, it's 11%. Um, OK, so the last one, you're definitely going to exercise in this one. So I want you to put your hands up, and I want you to, to estimate. So I told you 24% of kids are reading at their grade level. How many percentage points do you think that's changed in the last 20 years? OK, and if it's a number between 0 and 10, you don't need to put up or anything. I'm going to make it easy. Put up, up right now. Just take a guess, your best guess. Don't be shy. It's OK. How many percentage points do we think? I see a four, I see 10, oh, that's nice. Um, I see, a, has anyone got a zero up there? No? The right answer is five, five percentage points. In 1992, when we began collecting data through NAEP, we had 19% of our fourth grade reading grade level. Now, a generation later, almost, we've, we've crawled to 24%. At that pace, we will have half of our fourth graders reading at grade level by the year 2095. <laughs> I have a kindergartner, uh, and so that's not fast. Um, and I, I did this exercise not just uh, to, to give you a chance to get the blood moving, but because um, what I want to talk about tonight isn't the sad fact of what's happening in schools in California, but the fact that we all know it, uh, and that nobody stood up for California being the top 10, 20, 30, or even 40 states in the country. Uh, and public education is, is an enormous enterprise. We spend over $600 billion every year on K-12 education in this country, uh, and I think it's often daunting to us as citizens uh, and as philanthropists to think about creating change in public schools. Um, and I think our expectations for kids have, have unfortunately become um, depressingly low. One of my favorite things about state testing in, in California, and I have many favorite things about state testing in California, but my favorite thing is that there are, there are five categories you can fall into. Right? You can be advanced, that means you're, you're ahead of your grade level. You can be proficient, which means you're at your grade level. And then you can be basic, below basic, and far below. That means there's, there's one way to be above grade level and three ways to be <laughs> below grade level. Um, and that tells you sort of how intractable the problem is and, and how daunting it seems for all of us to, to even try to address that. Um, and so those of you who have seen me speak before know I often talk about the impact of, of reading partners on kids, and I will talk about that in a moment. But what I've really become excited about reading partners is the impact it has is on communities. Um, and in giving people a way to get involved in public schools uh, and to make a difference in a very tangible and very meaningful way um, that I think is, is the true leverage in the system. Philanthropy, given the size of public education in this country, is always going to be the tail trying to wag the dog. It's the people uh, who are ultimately the greatest leverage. And I want to tell you about one of those people who's, who's been kind enough to come up on stage with me and is getting lots of exercise right now. Um, <laughs> Sally Robinson, um, like many of us, knew the statistics about how bad schools are in California. And she wanted to get involved. And like most of us do when we're looking for something, she went on Craigslist. Uh, and Found read, it's true. There among the used cars and refrigerators, she found reading partners. And she looked at it and she said, okay, so tutoring one on one at an elementary school, I can do that. There's a site uh, you know, less than five miles from my house, that's wonderful. There's a, a structured curriculum that was developed in partnership with the School of Education at Stanford. That sounds like something that would make it easy. There's on site staff that are going to help me and support me and make sure that I understand what I'm doing. And 
And so she said, sign me up. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to steal any more of a thunder. I'd like you to hear from Sally as a citizen who is concerned about public schools, what her experience was like coming to work at Reason Partner. So Sally, can you, can you talk a bit? Thank you, Michael. Um, my name is Sally Robinson, and I've been tutoring for <coughs> excuse my hoarse voice uh, for about three years with with Reading Partners. And little did I know when I started tutoring that I also would be receiving tutoring. Um, when I first started, I was working with a very precocious first grade uh, girl, and she told me uh, a word in Spanish, and she wanted me to repeat it. And this particular word had an R in it. And so I said the word, and she said, no, Sally, it's her. And she got about this close to my face, and I, and I tried, she said, try it again. And so I tried it again, and she sat back and sighed, crossed her arms, and said, you're never going to get it. You need a tutor. <laughs> so I, I was very attracted to reading partners because of the opportunity to work with young children and to help to give them the gift and joy of reading at such a young age. And it is such a joy to watch a child in first, second, third grade who's been struggling and embarrassed to stand up in class and say anything, all of a sudden have the light bulb go on. And there's nothing more rewarding than that. Um, reading Partners made it very easy for me as Michael has said there's an amazing curriculum that I admire so much. I really want to meet the people that developed that curriculum, um, such as discussing with a second grade child the difference between fact and opinion and having a book that they read and trying to discern what is a fact and what is an opinion. And uh, just very, very interesting curriculum that's fun and uh, so enriching for the children to do. Um, it's an amazing organization, the way it's run. We receive training that's just top notch. We, see, we receive ongoing training during the school year. We receive weekly emails regarding what's going on. And we always feel in touch with the organization. And it is truly the best run organization that I've ever been a part of or a volunteer for. Um, last May, at the end of the school year, a teacher of one of the little second graders, actually she was the one that had me pronounce the R's, um, I got to work with her for two years, uh, the teacher came up to tell me how wonderful she was doing and how she was raising her hand and wanting to read out loud and how her scores had gone up dramatically. And I was so excited and even more excited at the end of the year celebration with the parents, her mom came and through the help of an interpreter, tearfully gave me a hug and said, oh, my daughter talks about you all the time. And now when she goes home, she doesn't turn on the television, but she reads her favorite book. And And I think at that point I cried and gave her a hug, and, and that's what it's all about. So thank you so much for your support. So Sally's is one of literally thousands of stories that are happening in Reading Partners every year. Uh, and we're incredibly proud of the, the success that tutors like Sally have with their students last year. Uh, nine out of 10 of our students measurably improved their progress in reading. And that means they didn't just gain skills, which they should be doing anyhow, but they're gaining skills at a faster pace before they started. We're in the second year now of a randomized control study that's being executed in partnership with Stanford. And we controlled kids all the way down to the level of classroom teachers. So two kids in the same classroom, uh, in uh, the same demographic, the same reading level. We found that 80% of the time our kids outperformed their peer, and they made twice as much progress in reading over the course of the school year. So we're, we're really uh, enthusiastic about the impact that we're having. And, and more than that, the impact that we're having on people who feel disempowered when it comes to schools and how big and, and how intractable those problems can seem. And, and if thousands of Sally Robinsons can have a positive experience with kids and can see how bright and motivated they are and can see the potential that they have, 
we can really begin to create some exciting change in public schools in this country. One of the statistics I'm most proud of, and we, we survey our volunteers, uh, that will probably tell you too much. Um, and we asked them, you know, are you going to volunteer again in the school after reading partners? And we get 90% say yes, they will. And we asked them, are you more likely to support a public school bond? And we get 85% telling us that they are. And so people really leave this with a whole different sense of, of what's possible in public schools. But that said, um, even though we're thrilled with the growth we've had, Reading Partners has gone from being founded by Mary Wright Shaw and, and a group of dedicated community individuals from one school to, to 37 schools, actually. I we added one more, I didn't tell you. Um, and I hope I'm not in trouble. Um, and you know, from a handful of kids to, to 2,000 uh, kids, uh, and from you know, serving just uh, students in Santa Clara and San Mateo County to being now statewide in California and launching in Washington, D.C. Uh, this, this fall. Um, you know, we've only just begun, uh, and that is just the tip of the tip of the iceberg uh, in terms of the need for what we do. And SB2's impact on us, I think, uh, is, is essential, not in just getting us to where we are, but in taking us to the next level. Um, I think perhaps the most lasting legacy of SB2 for us, uh, and their grant cycle with us was, was uh, many years ago, um, is this deeply ingrained sense of, of purpose um, and of scale. Um, and you know, the idea that um, our reach must always exceed our grasp, and that uh, big is never big enough uh, when it comes to solving a problem like this. And I think bringing visionaries like Lance onto our board and working with many, many of you here in the fam, uh, here, I was gonna say here in the family, my, um, here in the room who are like a family, um, you know, it has really been just absolutely transformative for us. And I think, um, you know, the, the hard dollars that SB2 invested were long, long ago. Um, and um, I think the intellectual investment that we got from SB2 has persisted far beyond that. Um, and the fact that they keep wheeling me out here, um, even though our grant cycle was five years ago, I think is a testament to that. Especially given the last time they let me do this, I made some disparaging remarks about the Stanford football team. I thought maybe never possibly going to be invited back again. Um, and yet here I am. Um, and the shoe is on the other foot this year. So, uh, so you know, in closing, I really just want to kind of uh, point out that uh, just in Santa Clara and San Mateo County alone, we think there are 15,000 kids that need reading partners. We're getting about 1,000 of them right now. And to meet that need, we have a population of about 2.5 million people in those two counties. All I need is six out of 1,000 people to want to be like that. Um, six out of a thousand. You don't need to be a one in a thousand person to be a Reading Partners volunteer. You just need to be a six in a thousand person. And I hope that all of you, um, and I say that kindly, Sally, um, I hope that all of you take that as, as a lesson tonight and as you think about education, you think about public schools, whether it's with us or with New Teacher Center, one of the other many excellent organizations that are out there, realize that you can make a difference. Realize that uh, you know, if you're a part of that six in a thousand uh, organization, you can change one child's world and Together, we can change the world for those children. And so um, thank you all for already kind of being a part of that just by participating in SB2. And I hope that, uh, like Reading Partner, you realize that your work has not even begun to start uh, and that you've got much more still to do. So thank you for your support, and I'll, I'll come back off the end.